Hi everyone, my name is Titeje Kepsi Richie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today our discussion on linear algebra and matrices for that matter will be solving system of equation using Gaussian elimination. So before the video will end, I will take you through what Gaussian elimination simply means. And I will take you to the process of solving system of equation using Gaussian elimination, both in two unknown variables and three unknown variables. This will be a very interesting engagement. Please take a seat. So when we talk of Gaussian elimination, Gaussian elimination is a method of solving system of equation that employs elementary rule operation. What is that? The elementary rule operation. Elementary rule operation simply means that reducing an augmented matrix into rho etilog form. What is an augmented matrix and what is rho etilog form? Now, if we have a two by uh, a system of equation with two unknown variables like this, the augmented matrix from this system of equation simply means. You see the coefficients of the variables, the, the x and the y are the variable, and everything is constant. So we say a, b, c, d, then we bring our constants here, e, f. d becomes the augmented matrix. Now, what is the rho etilog form? The rho etilog form simply means that all the entries in the principal diagonal, you reduce them to become one all the entries in the principal diagonal will become one then the entry below the principal diagonal will become zero so we will reduce this matrix like this into a real form it will look like this one maybe b zero one then let's say e f so the row etilog form of this augmented matrix will look like this then after you reduce the matrix into a row at law form, then Gaussian elimination is saying that you back off or you back attitude. You know the x here will be zero, so y will be equal to f. So we can say y is equal to f. Then our x plus b y will be equal to e. Now since we know the value of f, remember everything here is constant except the x and the y. So since we know the value of y, we can just substitute to get a value of s. That's the Gaussian elimination. What of if we have uh, three unknown variables? How do we do that? So with three unknown variables, how do we form the augmented matrix? It will look like this. A, B, C, D, the coefficient. Everything here is constant. The variables are x, y, and z. So we are just writing the coefficient of the variables. Then g, h, i. Then our constant j, k, l. This becomes the augmented matrix. Then you reduce this augmented matrix to rho etilog form. Thus, all the entries here in the principal diagonal will be 1. And all the entries below the principal diagonal will become 0. So we can have something like this. So here will be 1, maybe b, c. Then we have 0, this will be 1 as well, then maybe F, then 0, 0, 1. Then our constant, J, K, L. So we have reduced this into a rule at law form. Then what's the elimination is saying that you back off. See, your Z the x, 0 times x will be 0 times, 0 times y will be 0. So our z will become our l. Then look at this. We have y plus fz. y plus this fz will be equal to k. Then remember, our x plus by plus cz will be equal to j. So we pass off. Since we know the value... Remember, every other thing, all, everything here is constant, except the x, y, and the z. So we know the value of z, we just have to, to get a value of y. Since we know the value of y and the value of z, we substitute here to get x. That's the Gaussian elimination. So now we take a sample equation, starting with the 2 by 2. That's uh, with an, uh, two unknown variables. Then we see how 
we perform or we solve system of equation using Gaussian elimination. So there is a first question. It says solve the system of equation below. Solve the system of equation below using Gaussian elimination. So you can't use any other thing you know with this Gaussian elimination. So how do we do that? First, you write a system of equation as an augmented matrix. So our augmented matrix will just be 3, 5, the coefficient of the variables, 2, negative 3. Then we bring the constant, 9, negative 13. So what next? You reduce, you make this entry here 0. Then all the entries in the principal diagonal 1. Then after that, we back so. So how do we make the entries in the principal diagonal 1 and the entry below is 0? So, first, what maybe you may know the a method somewhere, but what I usually do is that, and I employ you to do that, is to reduce the entry below the principal diagonal to 0 first. So how do, we, do I do this to be 0? So if I multiply this by 2, 3 times 2 is 6. And I multiply this by 3, it's 6. Then if I subtract, I'll get 0 here. So this is R1 and this is R2. That row 1, maybe you to the first entry in the row. And this is the second entry in the row. So I will say 3 times our R2 minus 2 times our R1 should be substituted into the R2. So if we do that, we'll do it for all. When we do it for all, this becomes zero. So now let's check. 3 times, what's our R2? 2. Minus 2. What's our R1? 3. So two, 3 times 2 is 6. And 2 times 3 is also 6. That becomes 0. So you see that we can make that place 0. So all the entries in the first column will not be affected. So we just write it. A 3, 5, then a 9. Only this will be affected. So I will multiply this 3 by 2 and we subtract, we get 0. So the entry here will be 0. What next? We come to this place. So we multiply still R3 times R2 minus 2 times R1. So 3 times, what's our R2 here? Negative 3. Minus, what's our, our R minus 2? What is our R1? 5. So 3 times minus 3 is negative 9. Then 2 times 5 is 10. So that would be negative 19. So we write here negative 19. I, will, I hope you get that. Then the next place is this one. Still, 3 times our R2 minus our R1. So 3 times negative 13 minus 2 times 9. 3 times negative 13, I think that would be negative 39. Then 2 times 9 would be minus 18. So 39, negative 39 minus negative 18. So 39 plus 18, this would be 7. 3 plus 1, that would be, so that would be negative 57. I, I hope you get that. I hope you get that. So we have succeeded in making the entry here 0. So we have succeeded in making the entry there 0. So we don't have a problem. Now the entry in the principal diagonal must be made 1. How do we make this 3 1? When we divide this 3 by 3, we'll, get, we'll make it 1. So we can say that our R1 divided by 3 should go into our R1. So we divide all this by R, uh, we divide this by 3. So our R2, how do we make here to be 1? We divide it by negative 19. So our R2 divided by negative 19 should go into R2. Then we do it for the 2. So 3 divided by 3 will be 1. 5 divided by 3 will be 5 over 3. Then 9 divided by 3 will be 3. 19 divided by negative uh, 0 divided by negative 19 will be 0. Then negative 90 divided by negative 19 will be 1. Then negative 57 divided by negative 19 will be 3. I, I hope you get that. 
So now all the entries, the entry in the, in the below the principal diagonal is one, and all the entries in the principal that the, uh, the entry below the principal diagonal is now zero, and the entries in the principal diagonal are one. Then we back solve. So we we'll multiply this by s into zero. So our y is nothing but three. Then what next? We we'll multiply this by s. We we'll get x plus five over three y will equal to three. Now we substitute. So our x plus five over three plus plus y is three, and it is equal to three. So this will divide that our x plus five will be equal to three. So s will be equal to three minus five. S will be equal to negative two. So we can say that our s is negative two and our y is three. How I hope you get that. So we just make all the entry in the below the principal diagonal zero and all the entry in the principal diagonal one. Then we will back solve. Then you back solve. So let's solve our second example on the two unknowns. So what do we do? We form the augmented matrix. So C is two. 4, 8, then 10, negative 20. So what next? We made the entry here 0. Make this first entry 0. So if you multiply this by 4, and you multiply this by 6, and you subtract this from this, then it becomes 0. So we can say 6 times R2, this is the R2, minus 4 times R1 should be substituted into R2. Okay. So the R, the first column will not be affected. So 6, 2, and 10. Only this will be affected. So let's go. 6 times, what's our R2? Our R2 is 4. Minus 4 times 6. So 6 times 4, 24. 4 times 6, 24. That will become 0. So you do that for all the second columns. The next one, 6 times 8, then minus 4 times the 2. 6 times 8, 48. 4 times 2, 8. 48 minus 8 is 40. Then you write a 48. Then we'll do it for this one too. So 6 times 10 minus 4 times, okay, 6 times negative 20, sorry, the R2 is negative 20, minus 4 times 10. 6 times negative 20, that will be negative 120. Then 4 times 10, that will be 40. Negative 120 minus negative, minus 40 will be negative 160. So we have a negative. So the negative 120 minus 40 will be negative 160. Then we write the negative 160 there. Now we have succeeded in making this zero. The next thing is that this entry here should be made one. So how do we do that? When we divide this by six, we we'll make this place one. So we we'll divide the, all the columns by six. When we we'll divide this by 40, we we'll make it one. So we we'll divide all the columns by 40. So we say R1 divided by six should be substituted into R1 and R2 divided by 40 should be substituted into R2. So what do we have? The first one, 6 divided by 6 will be 1. 2 divided by 6, 2 divided by 6. That will be 1 over 3. So we write our 1 third. Then 10 divided by 6, that will be 5 out of 3. 2 divided 5, 2 divided 3. So 5 out of 10. The next, 40 will divide the whole of this. 0 divided by 40 will be 0. 40 divided by 40 will be 1. The negative 160 divided by 40, that will be negative 4. I hope you get that. Now, what next? You back substitute or you back solve. So, automatically, our y will be negative 4. You see how easy the elementary, the Gaussian elimination is. Immediately you reduce into rule at your form, you find the value of y direct. So y is negative 4. Then 1 times this x will be x. So x plus 
one third y will give us 5 over 3. So you have x plus one third. What's our y? Negative 4 will be 5 out of 3. So when we, we multiply this, we get negative 4 over 3 will be equal to 5 out of 3. We just transpose the, we'll make as a subject, then we'll find the value. Okay, so our x will be equal to 5 out of 3 plus 4 out of 3. So the LCM is the same. So we just, the denominators are the same. We just add the numerator. 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we can say our s is 3 and our y is negative 4. I, I hope you get that. Very, very easy. Very, very easy. So that's for 2 by 2. That's 2 unknown. Now we'll take 3 unknown variables. A very interesting one. So the next one. Uh, solve the system of equation below using Gaussian elimination. So we need to write the system into augmented matrix. So remember the coefficient here is 1. 1, 2, then the 9. Then 2, 4, negative 3, then 1. Then 3, 6, negative 5, and 0. What next? We make all the entries here 0 and all the entries here in the principal diagonal 1. Then you back solve. It's a very interesting thing. So now let's see how we do that. So, how do we make this first entry here zero? So you can see when we multiply this by two and we subtract it from this, it will become zero. So we say R two minus two times R one. So two times R one will become two. When we subtract it from this, two get zero, and it should be substituted into R two. So since it is being substituted into R2, the first column and the third column will not be affected. So let's repeat those ones. 1, 1, 2, then 9, then 3, 6, negative 5, then 0. Only the middle ones. So let's see. What's our R2 is 2 minus 2 times. What's our R1 here is 1. So 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So we we'll make it 0. The next one, this. So that will be 4 minus 2 times. So this 4 minus 2 times 1. So 4, 2 times 1 is 2. 4, time, four minus 2 will be 2. We we'll put 2 there. What's the next thing? This one. So negative 3 minus 2 times 2. So negative 3, 2 times 2 is 4. So negative 3 minus 4. Is negative zero and this that will be one minus two times nine two times nine is eighteen one minus eight is negative seventeen and we'll put negative seventeen so we have succeeded in making this zero the next one is we make this one to zero how do we make it zero we we'll multiply this by three and subtract it from this it will be zero so we say our R3, this R3, minus 3 times R1, and we'll go into R3. That means only the third column will be affected. So let's repeat the first and the second. 1, 1, 2, 9. Then 0, 2, negative 7, negative 17. So only the third one will be affected. So we say 3. That's our R3 here, minus 3 times R1. R1 is 1. So 3, three times 1 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. This becomes 0. Then we use this and this. So that will be 6 minus 3. 6 minus 3 times the 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 6 minus 3 is 3. So this place will be 3. Then the next one. This and this. So negative 5 minus 3 times 2. Negative 5. 3 times 2 is 6. So negative 5 minus 6 is negative 11. Then this will be negative 11. The last one. This and this. So 0 
R3 here is zero minus three times nine. Three times nine is twenty-seven. Zero minus twenty-seven is negative twenty-seven. So we are negative twenty-seven. So we are succeeded in making this to zero. The next is that we make this one to zero. Remember, this is the, the principal diagonal. And these are the entries below it. So we make this one to zero. How do we make it zero? So, if we use R1 against R3, you see that this place will change into another value, the user of zero. So rather, let's use our R2 against R3. So we we'll multiply this by 3 and subtract it from uh, the multiplication of this by 2 we we'll get 0. So we say 2 times R3 minus 3 times R2 should be substituted into R3. So we we'll repeat all the columns except the R3. So 1, 1, 2, then 9. Then 0, 2, negative 7, negative 17. So only this will be affected. So, we said 2 times our R3. So our R3 here is 0. Minus 3 times R1, uh, R2. R2 there is also 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 3 times 0 is also 0. So this place will still be 0. The next one, this and this. So 2 times... 3 minus 3 times 2. So 2 times R3 minus 3 times R2. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. So it becomes 0. So we'll do it for these two. So we said 2 times R3. So negative 11 minus 3 times R2. Negative 7. So 2 times negative 11 will be negative 22. Then three, negative 3 times negative 7, that will be plus 21. So negative 22 plus 21 is negative 1. I hope you get that. You get that. Then this one. That's 2 times negative 27 minus 3 times negative 17. So 2 times negative 27 will be negative 54. Then 3 times 17 will be 51. So that will be plus 51. So we subtract negative 54 plus 53 is negative 3. So here will be negative 3. So we have succeeded in making all the entries below the principal diagonal zero now the next thing is we make all the entries in the principal diagonal one then we back solve so when we check the first entry here it's already one this is not one what do we do to make it one we divide it by two so we said our r2 divided by two should be substituted into r2 here is also not one we make it one we multiply the r we multiply that by negative 1, then it will become 1. So we say negative R3. We negate the R3. It should be substituted into R3. The R1 is already 1, so we don't have problem. So 1, 1, 2, then 9. So 0, 0 divided by 2 will be 0. 2 divided by 2 will be 1. Negative 7 divided by 2 will be negative 7 over 2. Then negative 17 divided by 2 will be negative 17 over 2. Then 0 times negative 1 will be 0. Then this will also be 0. Negative 1 times this negative 1 will be 1. Then negative 1 times 3 will be 3. So check. All the entries in the principal diagonal are 1. And all the entries below it are 0. So we back so. How do we back so? Automatically, our z is 3. I hope you get that. Our z is 3. What next? y, okay, plus negative 7 over 2z will be equal to negative 17 over 2. Okay, so we substitute this z, the value of z here. So we have y bracket 7 over 2 times 3 equal to negative 17 over 2. 
So y minus 7 times 3 is 21 over 2 is equal to negative 17 over 2. So our y will be equal to negative 17 over 2 plus 21 over 2. So the denominators are the same. We just add the numerator. Negative 17 plus 21 is 4 over 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So our z is 3. Y is 2. So we find our x. We find our x. So our x plus y plus 2z will be equal to 9. So we substitute the y and the z to get the x. So x plus y is 2 plus 2 times z, which is 3, will be equal to 9. x plus 2, 2 times 3 is 6, equal to 9. 8 equal to 9, 2 plus 6 is 8. x will be equal to 9 minus 8. x is 1. So we can say our x is equal to 1, our y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 3. So we have solved that, this system of equation using Gaussian elimination. It's a very interesting one. It's a very interesting one. So let's solve the second example on the three variables unknown. Like this, so we are going to solve this. We need to form the augmented matrix. So we have negative 3, 2, the coefficient, negative 1. Then 6, negative 6, 7. Then 3, negative 4, 4. Then the constant, negative 1, negative 7, negative 6. So, that's the augmented matrix. Now, we perform the elementary rule operation to reduce the augmented matrix to rule at law form. So, now let's start. So, first we reduce this to 0. If you multiply this by 2, it becomes 6, negative 6. Negative 6 plus 6 will become 0. So, we said that our R2 plus 2 times R1. Should be should go into our R2. So the, the first column and the second column will not be affected. So we repeat that negative 3, 2, negative 1, then negative 1. Then we have 3, negative 4, 4, negative 6. It will not be affected. So now let's see the entries that will go to the second column. So uh, the first one, R2 is 6 plus 2 times R1. R1 is negative 3. So 6, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So 6 minus 6 is 0. So it becomes 0. Perfect. So the next one, our R2 here is negative 6 plus 2 times our R1, which is 2. Negative 6, 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. So, the third one. What is there? The R2 is 7 plus 2 times our R1. The R1 is negative 1. So, 7. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 7 minus 2 is 5. Now, performing for this one too. So, what is our R2 there? Negative 7 plus 2 times R1. R1 is negative 1. Negative 7. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 7 minus 2 is negative 9. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. So, the next step is that we make this one 0. How do we make it 0? See, if I add negative 3 to this 3, I'll get 0. So, I'll just add. So, we say... R3 plus R1 should go into R3. I hope you are getting that. So the R1, the first column and the second column will not be affected because it's going to the third. So we have negative 3, 2, negative 1, negative 1. Then 0, negative 2, 5, negative 9. 
Now add negative 3 to 3, it will be 0. 2 plus negative 4 will be negative 2. Negative 1 plus 4 will be 3. Then negative 1 plus negative 6 will be negative 7. I, I hope you get that. The next step, we make this one to 0. How do we make that 0? Please, when you reach here, don't use the third, the first for the third. Use the second for the third. So, if I subtract this from this, I'll get zero. See, negative two minus negative two. It will be negative two plus two. That will be zero. So, what do we say? We say our R3 plus, okay, minus, we subtract minus R2. Should go into R3. So, what happened? The first and the second will not be affected. So we repeat that negative 3, 2, negative 1, negative 1. Then 0, negative 2, 5, negative 9. Only this. So negative 2, negative 2 minus this negative 2 will be 0. Uh, 0 minus 0 is 0. Then negative 2 minus this negative 2 will also be 0. Then 3 minus 5 will be negative 2. I hope you get that. Then negative 7 minus negative 9. See, negative 7 minus negative 9. That would be negative 7 plus 9. That would be 2. So this place will be 2. So we have succeeded in making all the entries in the principal diagonal 0. The next thing is that all the entries below the principal diagonal 0. Now the next thing is that all the entries in the principal diagonal, we make them 1. Then we back off. Then we back off. So, when we divide this by negative 3, we'll get 1. When we divide this by negative 2, we'll get 1. When we divide this by negative 2, we'll get 1. So we say R1 divided by negative 3 should go into R1. Then R2 divided by negative 2 should go into R2. And R3 divided by negative 2 should also go into R3. So that's what we'll do. So all will be affected. All will be affected. So negative 3 divided by 3 will be 1. 2 divided by negative 3, that will be negative 2 out of 3. Then negative 1 divided by negative 3 will be 1 over 3. Then negative 1 divided by negative 3 will also be 1 over 3. The second column. 0 divided by negative 2 will be 0. Negative 2 divided by negative 2, that will be 1. 5 divided by negative 2 will be negative 5 over 2. Then, negative 9 divided by negative 2 will be 9 out of 2. Then this one, 0 divided by negative 2, 0. 0 divided by negative 2, 0. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 will be 1. Then 2 divided by negative 2 will be negative 1. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. So now we have succeeded in reducing our augmented matrix into row at law 4. All the entries in the principal diagonal are 1, and all the entries below the principal diagonal become 0. So automatically, look at it. Our z will be negative 1. Simple. Then 1 times y, that will be y. Minus 5 over 2z will be equal to 9 out of 2. We substitute z since we know it. So y minus 5 over 2 times negative 1 will be equal to 9 out of 2. So this will be y plus 5 out of 2. The negative will affect. We equal to 9 out of 2. We transpose. So our y will be equal to 9 over 2 minus 5 over 2. 9 minus 5, the denominator side is 6, so 9 minus 5 is 4 over 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So our y is also 2. So since we know y, we know z, we can find our x. That means x minus 2 over 3z plus 1 over 3, uh, x minus 2 over 3y plus 1 over 3z will be equal to 1 over 3. So, we left with the last one, the last column. So 
we find a value of s. We know that of y. y is 2 is sub 2 plus 1 third plus z. z is negative 1. And it will be equal to 1 third. So we 2 times 2 will be 4 over, so we'll go over 3. Then 1 times this will be negative 1 over 3 equal to 1 third. So the basis are, uh, the denominators are the same. Okay, the denominator, so we just add negative 4 minus 4 will be negative 5 out of 3 equal to 1 over 3. So S will be 1 over 3 plus 5 over 3. So 1 plus 5 is 6 over 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we can say our S is 2. Our Y is also 2. And Z is the 1. I hope you get that. It's a very interesting thing. I know that when you practice it more, you will understand and you solve more examples to become perfect. Please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notification bell so that if I post more of this, you'll be the first to receive it. Until we meet again. Bye-bye.